Okay, this video is going to be pretty basic, but it is going to be running related, and I think it may help at least one of you. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you seven tips on how to make your morning runs easier. Let's get into it. Okay, let me be honest. I didn't come up with these tips on my own. I did find an article in Canadian Running Magazine. Canadian Running just provides a lot of great running content. You should definitely check them out. And if you want to check out this article, I will place a link to it in the show notes below. And this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose of this video is for you to tell me about your week of running. I want to hear about your successes and I definitely want to hear about those setbacks. So go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know about that week of running. And also let me know if you are a morning runner, an afternoon runner, an evening runner. Because if you are an evening runner and you're happy with it, maybe these seven tips on how to make morning running easier don't really interest you. If it doesn't interest you and you are still going to watch this video, I'm going to give you one of these because I really appreciate your time. Anyway, briefly, I am a morning runner. I just, I can't imagine running in the afternoon, having a whole day of just doing my tasks in the day, whether that's going to work or just working around the house or just doing what I do. I really like to get my run, for lack of a better term, out of the way. Because when I get it done in the first part of my day, I get to benefit from it for the rest of the day. That's really the main thing. And let's be honest, the morning is when I'm at my most active. I feel like moving around. As the afternoon goes on, my energy levels kind of dip. And that's probably why I don't like running in the afternoon. So mornings, mornings is for me. But it's not always easy. I do have a difficult time waking up some days. But the first tip, the first tip to make your morning runs just a little easier is not to hit snooze. I think there are probably two types of people in the world. There are people who hit snooze and people that don't hit snooze. I'm not a fan of snooze, although I get it. Maybe you want a couple more minutes. But really, are you getting good sleep when you hit snooze and you go back to sleep for a couple more minutes? I don't know. I, I question. I question the value of the sleep that you get for however long snooze is. Six minutes or so. So here's what I want you to do. And this really just comes down to discipline. And if you are disciplined enough to be getting up in the morning to go for your run, I know you are disciplined enough to just get up when your alarm goes off. And look, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but it just came to me. That term that if you want something done, you give it to a busy person. So you set your alarm for the last possible minute that you can sleep. That way you're getting the most amount of sleep that you can get. And you know that if you sleep a minute longer, Longer, you're going to be taking it out of your runtime. So you're going to have to get up on that first alarm. That's just my tip. Take it for what it is. I don't know if it's really worth anything, but that's what I do. And it works for me. I like getting my runs done first thing and I will never hit snooze. What I do do though is I have a backup alarm. So I am woken up by the alarm on my watch. It's a vibrating alarm. I will set an alarm for a certain time and then I'll set another alarm 15 minutes later. And that's just in case I am just so out of it that the first alarm doesn't wake me up. Hopefully I will get caught by the second alarm. And of course, I know I said there were two types of people in the world, those who hit snooze and those who don't hit snooze. There's actually three types of people in the world. The other type of person is someone that doesn't wake up to an alarm. And if that's you, I congratulate you. That is the absolutely best way that you can be. And if that is you, tip one does not apply to you. So just ignore it. The second way to make your morning runs just that little bit easier is to set your clothes out the night before. Look. We have to eliminate all decision making in the morning. If you have already set your alarm at the last possible minute for you to get up, get dressed, get out the door, go for that run. You don't want to be looking around in your closet, picking out what you want to wear. Take care of that the night before. You lay it out nicely so you can wake up, put those clothes on and just eliminate that one decision. It's also great to set your clothes out, perhaps in another room. If you sleep with a partner, you don't want to wake them up. You want to kind of wake up, sneak out get dressed, don't disturb them and you can go for your run. And again, we're just eliminating any unneeded decisions. Set those clothes out the night before. You will be a lot happier if you start doing that. The third way to make your morning runs just a little bit easier is to plan your breakfast. Now, this one comes directly from the article and it isn't actually something that I do. But if you do eat before a morning run, just have that planned out, just like you've already planned out your clothes, even if it's just half a banana before you get out the door. And morning runs are also a great way to test your race fueling strategy. So you've got to know that when you wake up and you eat something and then you go for a run, does it actually work for you? Does it give you cramps? Does it make you feel sick? Do you have to go to the loo? All these things that we want to test before race day, morning runs are a good way to do that. However, I've got some thoughts on that. Now, I probably only race four or five times a year. There are 365 days in a year. I usually take one day off a week on average. So in a year, if I was to just train and not take any additional days off, I would be taking 52 days off in a year, which brings me to 314 days of running in a calendar year. I don't know how much you like to plan or prepare or get ready for a race, but if I'm racing four or five times in a year, I don't need to practice my fueling 309 or 310 times to know what works. Seems a little excessive. But still, even though it doesn't work for me, and I I can see the flaws in practicing your fueling for a race every day. If you are someone that likes to eat before you go out for a run, just 
plan ahead, know what you're eating, maybe have it set out or left in the fridge, ready to just grab and go. Again, we're removing the decisions, just making our life easier and making your morning runs easier. The fourth thing, and there's definitely a trend here, but it's to know your run, know what you're doing, know the route that you are taking. And we're not gonna get too far into this because it is for the exact same reason that we lay out our clothes or we plan our breakfast, is that we're removing a decision that has to be made at the time. Yes, it sounds good, I agree with it. But perhaps you are like me, and when you're running from where you live, you've got specific routes that you can take. And these routes that you can take around your house, they probably correspond to different distances, right? You know where you have to go if you want to run a 5K or a 10K. So personally, I don't plan exactly which way I'm going before I actually do the run. A lot of times, I will be already into the run before I decide to do a certain loop. The only time that I will plan my run ahead of time is if I'm doing a workout. And that is because I like to do my workouts on a specific stretch of road that is well lit with lots of street lights. And it's the only time that I will do an hour and back. But other than my workout days, if I'm just going out for a normal seven mile easy run after I wake up and before I go to work, I kind of just make that decision on the fly. I get it, it's a good way to remove the barriers. And when we remove barriers, it makes our morning runs just that bit easier. Fifth way to make your morning runs a bit easier, this is gonna sound pretty obvious, it's to go to bed. Go to bed at a decent time. Don't be staying up all night and then expect to get up super early and go for a run. It just doesn't work. Sleep is vitally important to our running. And if you want to be a morning runner, you might want to think about going to bed just a bit earlier so you get enough sleep in order to make your runs that much better. And I bet every single one of you watching this knows this, but going out for a run when you haven't had any sleep is not a lot of fun. I'd say it's good training if you're gonna do an ultra that you're gonna be out running all day and all night. But aside from that, just not fun. Don't see much value in it. Even if you're going out for an easy run, if you haven't had enough sleep, it just makes it that much more difficult. So by going to bed at a good time, we're just making our morning runs easier. And that's the theme of this video. The sixth way to make your morning runs just a little bit easier is to drink water. And the article suggests that while we get dehydrated as we sleep, it's nice to have a glass of water on the bedside table so you can drink it as soon as you wake up. And if you don't do that, you're probably gonna get more dehydrated as the day goes on, especially if you go out for a run. And while you might not feel the effects of being a little dehydrated, immediately as your day goes on you're gonna feel just more exhausted and it becomes especially more important as the temperatures get a little warmer as we head into summer now I know I just told you to have a glass of water on the bedside table and kind of sip it as you're getting ready to go out the door but I would suggest not doing that I think once your alarm goes off and you've gotten up on the first time the alarm goes off I think you need to get out of the bedroom. Remember, this whole thing has been about removing barriers in order to get out the door bright and early and go for that morning run. And if the first thing you do when you wake up is have a little bit of drink, you're still comfortable lying in bed, I just think the temptation is too great for you to just roll over and go back to sleep after you've had a drink. No, forget that. Your alarm has already gone off. You are getting up. I would say leave the drink in the kitchen, leave it in the fridge. Now you can go straight to the fridge and have a drink. I do that. I have a cup of coffee waiting for me in the fridge. I do like cold coffee. And that's the first thing I drink when I wake up hopefully keeping me from being too dehydrated as my run and my day goes on. And finally guys, the seventh way that you can make your morning runs just a little easier. I think this is a bit of a cop out on the part of the article, but it's to get used to your morning. And the only way you can get used to your mornings is by doing it time and time again. And by using all the tips that we've already identified, we're naturally just gonna get used to it. The bumps are gonna get smoothed out and your morning runs will become easier. Not easy, but we're not looking for easy. We're looking for easier. And with that, I had a pretty good week of running. It started off on Monday with 7.5 miles, super easy. I really do like starting my week off with an easy run, even if I haven't taken a break between last week and the week that I'm currently running in. It's all up here, you know, when you start a week, when you end a week. And then on Tuesday, I ran 8.1 miles. And Tuesday's run was kind of a workout. I warmed up for two miles, then I did eight 400s with 400 meters recovery in between, and then I cooled down for 2.1 miles. Now, that workout, even though they were only 400s, was a bit of a slog. I wasn't turning my legs over as quick as I would have liked. I wasn't running as fast as I would have liked, but that's okay. Now that I say that, I actually don't know what I would have liked. I was still pretty happy to knock out those 400s though. Then on Wednesday, Wednesday was 10 miles, very easy. And then on Thursday, 10.1 miles. I did four miles very easy. Then I did a progression of four miles and then I cooled down for two miles after that. Now Thursday's run wasn't particularly taxing. I only ran four miles at what felt like, you know, putting in that little bit extra effort. But Friday was my day off and I still felt like I needed a day off. So I was happy to take it. Saturday was 7.6 miles, very easy. And Sunday, it was also 7.6 miles, very easy, but on Sunday I did run over to the mall and I did run up and down the car park a bit, just trying to make it look like that I'm doing something other than running easy. And with that, my week's total came to 50.97 miles, which is about 82 kilometers. So all in all, a 
pretty good week for me. Guys, down here in Florida, things are heating up. It's getting warm. It feels like summer already. So with that, if you have made it to this point in the video, why don't you drop the sun emoji in the comments so I know that you've made it all the way to the end. And don't forget to let me know about your week of running. And with that, be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.